Welcome to Sessions. This is your host, Eloquence. I'm just going to read an article. It's titled, The Federal Reserve System, Article 1. In the United States of America, judges, politicians, and other government servants pledge and swear to uphold the law of the land deriving from the Constitution, a document founded in liberty and the protection thereof. Despite this sworn oath, Article 1, Sections 8 and 9 of the Constitution were violated December 23, 1913 by the passing of the Federal Reserve Act. Article 1, Section 8 states Congress and Congress alone can, quote, lay and collect taxes, but shall be uniform throughout the United States. It also says Congress can coin and regulate money. Article 1, Section 9 limits the power of Congress and says, quote, no direct tax shall be laid in less in proportion to the census. In other words, Congress does not have the authority to directly tax the American people in a non-uniform fashion. However, the Federal Reserve enforces such a tax called the Federal Income Tax through their subsidiary, the Internal Revenue Service. Defenders of the income tax cite the 16th Amendment of the Constitution as the lawful basis of the income tax. Official documents from the various republics and commonwealths of the Union convey a contrary conclusion. In 1913, Democratic Representative Carter Glass of Virginia was set to become the next chairman of the House of Representatives Banking and Currency Committee. He drafted House Resolution 7837, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, which became statutory law with the signature of President Woodrow Wilson. The Federal Reserve Act formed a central bank supported by 12 regional banks and a board of governors handpicked by the president with its headquarters in Washington, D.C. The primary function of the central bank was to provide, quote, banking services to depository institutions and to the federal government. Dubiously titled the Federal Reserve, the central bank led many people to assume it as part of the federal government. Nonetheless, the Federal Reserve asserts it is, quote, independent within government and is not owned by anyone and is not a private profit-making institution. More mysterious is the fact that the Federal Reserve can execute the monetary policy of the United States without checks and balances. The Federal Reserve answers to no branch of government and takes action as it sees fit, adjusting interest rates, controlling how much cash to print, and how much cash to keep in the bank or enter into circulation for public use, escaping accountability when their policies fail. Furthermore, the Federal Reserve claims it is, quote, organized much like private corporations and issues shares of stock to its member banks while reaping 6% dividends per year enforced by law. Throughout history, banks have issued banknotes commonly known as dollar bills or promissory notes. The difference between notes of the past and Federal Reserve notes of today is that there is no collateral backing like gold or silver, which has traditionally been the only form of money. Federal Reserve notes, dollar bills, are, quote, not redeemable in gold, silver, or any other commodity and receive no backing by anything. The notes have no value for themselves. Thus, paper money is worthless and the Department of the Treasury concurs. If dollar bills hold no value, then it is odd that Federal Reserve notes become, quote, liabilities of the Federal Reserve banks and obligations of the United States government. If you take out a loan from a bank, credit, not money, you are obligated to pay it back. But if you don't pay it back, the bank is liable to the Federal Reserve for the debt even though the Treasury Department openly says the notes are worthless. If the Federal Reserve is part of the federal government and indeed a functioning branch within it, then why is the government obligated to pay itself back? Why would the government pay itself 6% interest every year by collecting money from the people? Where is the money going? According to the Federal Reserve's website, it is going to Federal Reserve stockholders. 
U.S. Internal Revenue Code Title 26 is often cited as the law requiring Americans to pay the income tax. Notwithstanding, the Internal Revenue Code is more akin to a payment schedule, showing percentages of money owed actually withheld from your paycheck depending on yearly or quarterly income than it is to a law holding people accountable. Internal Revenue Code is a statutory maze filled with smoke and mirrors, vague and misleading writing seemingly crafted with the intent to confuse. It is befuddling to have hundreds of pages of code to enforce, quote unquote, the law. The reason for this monstrosity is to force, quote, voluntary compliance. It's voluntary to pay income tax, but if you don't pay up, the IRS will send a SWAT team to your home and come down on you by any means necessary. In 2006, the IRS released a document with several objectives including, quote, reducing opportunities for evasion and improving compliance activities. The meaning of this is they intend to create even more obstructive bureaucracy, more complex internal revenue code, and more showings of force on those who do not voluntarily comply. Apparently, it is indirectly effective on the people to intimidate them into compliance by witnessing brute force projected onto those who do not comply voluntarily. The Federal Reserve Act and ultimately the income tax allegedly passed in 1913 because the 16th Amendment of the Constitution allowed it, despite being in direct contradiction to Article 1, Sections 8 and 9. The 16th Amendment says, quote, the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. Ironically, the 16th Amendment allegedly was ratified by the necessary majority of the 48 states existing at the time of February 1913, 10 months before the Federal Reserve Act was passed by Congress and signed by Wilson two days before Christmas. Most of Congress is home for vacation. The problem lies in the fact that, despite being in direct contradiction to Article 1, Sections 8 and 9, the 16th Amendment was not ratified by three-fourths of the 48 states as Secretary of State Philander Knox announced to the country via the media. A man by the name of Bill Benson traveled to the capitals of all 48 states involved and found the official documentation showing and proving from official sources the ratification process did not happen as Secretary of State Knox proclaimed. Solicitor of the State Department, the top legal advisor to Knox, sent Knox a 16-page memo containing information proving less than three-fourths of the states had successfully ratified the amendment as required by the Constitution. The mistakes from intentional abuse of the ratification process included everything from grammatical and punctuation errors to missing governor's signatures resulted in failure to follow Article 5 of the Constitution. These errors were completely ignored by Knox when he lied to the public in spite of the facts. The State Department misconstrued the information to take advantage of the average American who at that time had no means to investigate the credibility of the information they were receiving. Television news nor the internet were around in 1913 and most people could not afford to drive around to 48 states to search archives for the official documents. The Federal Reserve Act was set up by bankers for bankers, making it the law for Federal Reserve stockholders to reap profit through the corporate banks that make up the system. This entire central banking system was created to circumvent the checks and balances of the United States Constitution while openly issuing credit or promissory notes that are worthless pieces of paper that the Federal Reserve charges people interest on for using. The Internal Revenue Code is nothing more than a means to justify forced voluntary compliance through fraudulent deception and organized confusion. Law-abiding Americans are fooled and intimidated into paying the income tax or face government guns at their door. The 16th Amendment was never ratified by three-fourths of the 48 states of the Union at that time. 
the constitutionality and lawful application of the entire Federal Reserve System, including the Internal Revenue Service and the Federal Income Tax, is non-existent and fraudulent.